The most uh, important thing about working with a uh, community is that you have a, a, a down-to-earth understanding of what's happening. Nina uh, played a role, uh, a unique role, because we're not only the board and the, the team that first started, that are still here, um, are from the Lower Ninth Ward. So we were directly impacted. Uh, we had personal issues that we were struggling with while we were helping to get other families and our neighbors back home. So I think a, a unique role that was played uh, by Nina was to uh, connect. The conversations was from a different, uh, you know, just a, a whole different level, at a whole different level. The planning was taking place of uh, how communities would come back. But at the same time, the conversations were taking place with many of the residents. And what we began to learn was people did want to come back but at the same time, what am I coming back to? We don't, we, we're not getting the information. Our input is not there. And so how do you even, it was hard for people to even decide, do I want to stay in Texas? Do I want to stay in Mississippi? Or wherever they might have been residing at that time, it was hard. What makes the green grow? What turns the seasons? What is the reason the world goes round? What is the mystery so deep inside us? Turning silence into sound. Turning silence into sound. Women, single parents, didn't have a place to take their children to go to work so they were in a dilemma so some people lost their jobs because they they had to go to work but they had a child so they stayed home with their child so we came up with a program where we found individuals to keep the children and we subsidized the income we paid half they paid half and and we paid half to the child care provider so they would have a place a safe place to leave their children and go to work and it's not just a um, a daycare center the children are, are taught they're given all the information that they were getting preschool so once they go they're already ready they are ahead of a lot of children because of what they're taught in the homes no one had any place to go the the from babies to people in their 80s the whole spectrum people the the um, the gym where the middle where the kids went the teenagers went that was destroyed where the babies went, that was destroyed. Where the elderly were going for activities, that was destroyed. There was no place to go. I think that because the Zion Travel Cooperative Center came in and we started our work different from most organizations because we didn't come in to do our work based on the government helper. Our work was based on we got to do it for ourselves. In spite of what the government is all about, we need to do for ourselves. So we came in and we looked at creative ways of rebuilding our community, look at some um, non-traditional dollars, you know, like money from the Unitarian Universalists. But what we did with those money, that other people don't need to think about staff, we took the money and put it into brick and mortar. So we took the money and brought lumber, uh, uh, roofing materials, electrical wiring and all that. And so with volunteer labor, we was able to not only gut the house out, but replace all the uh, uh, termite boards and, and all those kind of things with new lumber and stuff, and then get um, help people with putting money towards sheetrock and all that, and we was able to rehab houses and to match some of the little dollars that people had. So the work started going on much faster. When 